Hello, I'm glad you could join us for our lesson today. Sue, our friends are here. Did you want to come out and say hello? Sue, did you see some of our friends that we know out there? Look really closely. Do you see Josiah? Hi, Josiah. Do you see Abigail? Hi, Abigail. Do you see Stephen? Hi, Stephen. We're so happy to see you in class today. And some other friends might be here too. Do you want to see who else you see? Maybe you see Shelby and Jada and Dawson and Lexi, maybe Judd and Owen and Paisley and Tripp. Lots of our friends are here. I think they want to know what the letter of the day is. But before we do that, Sue, I have to ask, what's this hat about? Are you wearing that hat? Because we're going to be talking about Katie and the big snow. That's our story for story time today. Well, Sue, you and your hat can sit down quietly so we can begin. Our letter for today is the letter K. K looks like this. This is the uppercase K and the lowercase K. Let's start with the uppercase K and see if we can write it together. You can practice too if you'd like to, or you can just watch me. All right, so we're gonna make the number one just like this. We're going to move our pencil and then we're going to slide to the middle and slide out. In the story, Katie puts on a snowplow. And so the snowplow looks like this. It's pointed at the tip because she needs it to be that way to push the snow out of the way. So this looks kind of like a big snowplow. Okay, let's see what the K looks like on the handwriting house, okay? So on the handwriting house, we're going to make a one upstairs and downstairs. We're going to move our pencil, slide to the middle and slide out. Let's try again. Number one, move your pencil over and then slide to the middle and slide out. Try not to pick up your pencil when you're doing the sliding part, okay? A lot of students that I've had like to do this. They want to slide to the middle and slide out, but the slide isn't meeting in the middle. So it's better if you don't pick your pencil up so you don't lose your spot. Slide to the middle and slide out. That's the uppercase letter K. Well, the lowercase K looks almost the same, except for there's just a small snowplow. So make the number one and then make a small snowplow by sliding to the middle and sliding out. The small snowplow is about halfway down on the big number one. So let's see what that looks like on the handwriting house. You're going to make the one just like you did with uppercase K. You're going to just make it by drawing a line all the way down. And then you're gonna to come to the middle line, the yellow line, if you're using the handwriting house printable, you're gonna to slide to the middle and slide out. You have to kind of pretend that there's a middle line downstairs so you know where to start sliding out. Slide to the middle and slide out. It looks like a tiny snowplow. Okay, so that's the lowercase k. Now let's talk about what letter k sounds like. To make the letter k sound, you have to take the back of your tongue and put it on the back of your mouth at the top and kind of make it go up and down like this. You see my tongue? That's what letter k says. Can you try? What does letter k say? Good job. Do you know what starts with the letter K? Kangaroo. That's one word that starts with K. What do kangaroos do? Hmm. Kangaroos, they jump or hop. Well, let's do that. Let's stand up and let's hop like a kangaroo. Here we go. Can you hop? If you got the urge to jump and don't know what to do, jump up and down just like a kangaroo. Put your feet together and your hands in front of you. Lift your feet up off the ground and jump around the room. Hop, hop, hop and down at the zoo. Hop, hop, hop and like a kangaroo. Are you being a kangaroo? Hop, hop, hop and down at the zoo. Hop, 
like a kangaroo come and sit down and let's rest and we'll do some blending now when you start to read you find out that reading is just blending letter sounds together so when you're beginning to learn how to read we just start with two letter sounds we're going to blend two sounds together but i need the vowels to be able to do that so can you tell me what the vowels are do you remember the vowels are a E, I, O, and U. Nice job. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. These are the vowels. Well, we're going to put a K with each of these vowels, okay? So let's put a K with the letter A. We know what K says. K says K. Okay, so now A makes this sound at, like at you, like you're sneezing. So let's blend these two sounds together, okay? K, A, K, A, K, A, K, A. Nice job blending. Let's try to blend with letter E. E kind of looks like an ear, and E says eh, eh. Okay, let's blend. K, eh, k, k, k. Let's blend again. This time we're going to use letter I. I sounds like eh, like an icky sticky lollipop. Here we go. K, eh, k, eh. K. Okay, two more. Let's put K with an O. O says ah. Here we go. K. Ah. K. Ka. Ka. Last one. Let's put K with a U. U says oh, uh, like when you have a tummy ache. Oh. Uh. Here we go. K. Oh. Uh. Ka, ka. Well, if you're ready to blend, then you can practice ka, ke, ki, ka, ka. If you're not ready to be uh, to begin blending, and you still need to really get that letter K down pat, then you just practice K says k like a kangaroo. K says k k k. Okay, for our math time today, I have something pretty fun. I have some snowmen to show you. There are five snowmen. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. And these five snowmen are going to go riding on a sled. Let's sing about it. Five little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. I called Frosty and 
Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on the sled. How many are left? Very good. Okay, four little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. Josiah called Frosty and Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on that sled. Good job. How many are left? Three. Three little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. Abigail called Frosty and Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on the sled. Good job. How many are left? Oh, I think there's still two left, right? Two, two are left. Two little snowmen riding on the sled. One fell off, there he goes, and bumped his head. Mm, how about Steven? Steven, you wanna call Frosty? Steven called Frosty and Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on that sled. How many are left? One little snowman riding on the sled. He fell off and bumped his head. How about Judd? Can you call Frosty? Judd called Frosty and Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on the sled. Very nice job. Well, how many are left? None or zero are left, but let's see if we can bring them back. Will you help me to count, Owen? Okay, and Trip and Paisley, will you help count too? All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Five snowmen, they're safe and sound. Okay, so we're going to do something else for math today. We're going to be doing a little bit, kind of like measuring, but we're just going to be trying to decide which has more and, uh, which, excuse me, which is taller and which is shorter. So let me pull up this slide so you can see it. And you can help me decide which is, let's do taller first. So which is taller? And I'll put the link below so you can get this. This printable, I think it was a dollar. So a grown up will have to get that online if you want this printable, but I thought it was super cute for our class. So let's see if we can decide which snowman is taller. The snowman with the buttons or no buttons? The snowman with no buttons is taller. Nice job. Okay, so which is taller now? The snowman with, uh, sorry, the mitten or the hat? Which is taller? The mitten is taller. Nice job. Let's look down here and see if we can decide which is taller, the mittens or the snowflake? Which is taller? The mittens are taller, great work. Which is taller, the bear or the tree? The tree is taller. Now we're going to see if we can decide which is shorter, not taller. This time we're gonna do shorter. Okay, so let's take a look and see which is shorter. Is it the cup with the top or the tea cup? Which do you think is shorter? The, the teacup, the teacup is shorter. Which do you think is shorter, the snowflake or the star? The snowflake is shorter. Which do you think is shorter, the bird or the bear? The bear is shorter, nice job. Which do you think is shorter, the mittens that have stripes or the mittens that have dots? The mittens with the stripes are shorter. Wow, you did a great job with our math today. Now let's talk about our color. I used the color red right here to write our vowels. And did you know that's our color for today, red? In the book I'm gonna read you, it's called Katie and the Snow Day. 
well, she is red. Katie is a snowplow and she is red. So I thought instead of saying stop signs are red, can we instead say Katie is red? So I'm gonna just scratch that off right there and I'm gonna write Katie's name. Katie's name starts with a K and since it's a name, it uses a big uppercase K for the first letter. Okay, so we're gonna say Katie is red too. Here we go. R-E-D, red, R-E-D, red. I can spell red, I can spell red. Fire trucks are red, Katie is red too. R-E-D, R-E-D. So that was our color time today. And now it's time for our shape practice. Today we're going to learn about this shape. Do you know what shape this is? Hmm. It's like a circle, but it's not flat. It's actually fat. I can hold it. It's a sphere. Can you say sphere? Did you know that we live on planet Earth and planet Earth is a sphere? It's round like this ball. Well, did you know planet Earth also has magnetic field? Did you know there are two poles, a North Pole and a South Pole? And we can use something to help us with direction called a compass. I have made a compass for us here. And did you know that the arrow on a compass is always pointing to North, to true North? So you know when you're holding a compass that the way the arrow is pointing is North. No matter which way you turn or walk, the compass arrow is always going to be pointing true North. Well, there's some letters on this compass. I wanna tell you what those letters mean. The N stands for North. The S stands for South. The E stands for East. And the W stands for West. This helps you to know which direction you're wanting to go in. Okay, so in the story, Katie and the Snow Day, we're going to hear, I think it's Katie and the Big Snow is what it's called, but we're going to hear about Katie having to snow, having to plow the snow all over the city of Geopolis. She's going to need to know what direction to go in, and you're going to see a compass on the side of some of the pages in the book. We'll spot those out when we get to that part. Okay, so now for our art project today, we're gonna make some snow dough. Snow dough is a lot like Play-Doh, but it looks like snow. For this project, I'm just going to use some baking soda, two cups of baking soda, and then I'm going to use three fourths of a cup of water. Now there are a lot of recipes for snow dough. Another idea is two cups of cornstarch and one third cup of vegetable oil. But the recipe I'm using today is just two cups of baking soda and three fourths of a cup of water. So all you have to do is dump those ingredients together into a bucket and then you just stir them around and it really begins to look like snow. Look at that. It even kind of feels like snow, but it won't melt. And you know what you can do today? Maybe you can take some toy cars or trains and you can make them push through the snow like a snow plow and clear the road like Katie in the story. So that's a fun art project for today. There's a train. So this is snow dough. I hope you get a chance to make some. If you don't have those ingredients, you know what you could even do? You could just put some flour, just a little bit of flour in a pan and roll those trucks and cars through that flour. That's fun too. And it looks like snow. Well, it's time to read the story together. The story is called Katie and the Big Snow. So let me share my page with you. Katie and the Big Snow was written by Virginia Lee Burton. That means she's the author. But do you know what? She also drew the picture. So that means she's also the illustrator. Katie was a beautiful red crawler tractor. She was very big and very strong. And she could do a lot of things. Katie had a bulldozer to push around with. 
Katie also had a snow plow to plow snow with. Now, do you remember that I told you that a snow plow kind of looked like the letter K? Here you can see what I meant. See, her snow plow is kind of pointed. That's so she can push the snow out of the way. All right, let's keep reading. Katie belonged to the highway department of the city of Geopolis. The highway department repaired the roads in the summer and kept them clear of snow in the winter so traffic could run in and out and around the city. Do you see the city? A great idea today might be to build the city of Geopolis. You can use Legos or blocks or even maybe your train tracks and buildings. All summer, Katie worked on the roads with her bulldozer. Katie liked to work. The harder and tougher the job, the better she liked it. Once when the steamroller fell in the pond, Katie pulled it out. The highway department was very proud of her. They used to say nothing can stop her. When winter came and they put snow plows on the big trucks and changed Katie's bulldozer for her snow plow, she was ready for the snow. But Katie was so big and strong, she had to stay home because there was not enough snow for her to plow. Then early one morning, it started to drizzle. The drizzle turned into rain. The rain turned into snow. By noon, it was four inches deep. The highway department sent out the truck plows. By afternoon, the snow was 10 inches deep and still coming down. Looks like a big snow, they said at the highway department, and they sent Katie out. A strong wind came up. Can you help me make a strong wind? And drifts began to form one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet. The snow reached the first story windows, the second story windows, and then it stopped. One by one, the truck snow plows broke down. The roads were blocked. No traffic could move. The schools, the stores, and the factories were closed. The railroad station and airport were snowed in. The mail couldn't go through. The police couldn't protect the city. The telephone and power lines were down. There was a break in the water main. The doctor couldn't get his patient to the hospital. The fire department was helpless everyone and everything was stopped. Everyone except Katie. The city of Geopolis was covered with a thick blanket of snow. Slowly and steadily, Katie started to plow out the city. Help, called the chief of police. Help us get out to protect the city. Sure, said Katie, follow me. So Katie plowed out the center of the city. Help, called the postmaster. Help us get the mail through. Sure, said Katie, follow me. So Katie plowed down to the railway station. Help, help, called out the telephone company and the electric company. The poles are down somewhere in East Geopolis. Follow me, said Katie. Can you find the compass on this page? A compass has letters and little lines and it looks like a small circle. Did you find it? It's way up here, there's the compass. Katie has to plow the roads to the east. So she's gonna need a compass to tell her which way to go. Help, called the superintendent of the water department. There's a break in the water main somewhere in North Geopolis. Follow me, said Katie, and she plowed the roads to North, to the North Geopolis. Help, emergency, called out the doctor. Help me get this patient to the hospital way out in West Geopolis. Sure, said Katie, follow me. Can you see the compass on this page? Katie needs the compass this time so she can go west to help the doctor. Okay, let's keep going. So Katie plowed the roads to the hospital. Help, 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 called out the fire chief. There's a three alarm, three alarm fire way out in South Geopolis. Follow me, said Katie, and she went south and plowed the roads to the fire.
On the way back, a plane signaled for help. The airport was snowed in. Katie was beginning to get a little tired, but she wouldn't stop, not Katie. She hurried over to the airport and plowed out the runway so the airplane could land safely. Then after she had found the broken down truck plow, she started home. The fire department had put out the fire. The doctor had saved his patient. The water department had repaired the main. The telephone and electricity were on. The mail could go through and the police could protect the city again, thanks to what Katie did. Look at the city, it's all clear. Everyone can go all around the city. She plowed out the side street. The traffic could move in and out and around the city. Only then did Katie go home to rest. She was a hard worker. And do you know what? You were a hard worker today too. You practiced your letter sounds and blends. You helped me sing a song about five little snowmen and call Frosty. We also learned the directions on a compass and we learned that a compass always po uh, points true north. And we made some snow dough, so that was super fun. I think that was my favorite part, the snow dough. Well, I hope you have a fun day today, and I hope you'll join me again. Goodbye.